Workplace Violence and Harassment Hamilton Wentworth District School Board is committed to the prevention of workplace violence and harassment and to ensuring the health and safety and dignity of all workers in its workplace. Any threats or acts of violence or harassment by or against workers or the public are unacceptable and will not be tolerated. This includes situations where an employee may be exposed to domestic violence while at work. Hamilton Wentworth District School Board will take the steps required to protect its workers from all sources of workplace violence and harassment. Objectives. By the end of this course, you should be able to describe what workplace violence and workplace harassment are, describe how to recognize, evaluate, and control violence in the workplace, and explain how to identify behaviors that precipitate workplace violence. When you have a violence and harassment free workplace, everyone is able to work, learn, and grow in a caring, tolerant, and positive environment, learn how to manage their own anger, frustrations, and conflicts without resorting to aggression, trust, respect, and have mutual protection from harm, participate in the planning and implementation of workplace harassment and violence prevention policies and programs to ensure continuous improvement. Occupational Health and Safety Legislation, the Internal Responsibility System. The Internal Responsibility System is the main principle in the Occupational Health and Safety Act. Workplace safety is achieved when all persons in the workplace meet and exceed the duties, responsibilities, and protections as outlined in the Act. Every worker has the right to be informed, instructed, and supervised with information and knowledge of workplace hazards, participate in workplace safety via the Joint Health and Safety Committees, refuse unsafe work, and be free of reprisals when reporting health and safety concerns. When discussing workplace violence and workplace harassment, it's important that we all are using the same definitions. For this reason, the Ontario government has defined some of the terms in the Act. Workplace violence. The exercise of physical force by a person against a worker in a workplace that causes or could cause physical injury to the worker. An attempt to exercise physical force against a worker in a workplace that could cause physical injury to the worker. Or a statement or behavior that is reasonable for a worker to interpret as a threat to exercise physical force against the worker in a workplace that could cause physical injury to the worker. Workplace harassment means Engaging in a course of vexatious comment or conduct against a worker in a workplace that is known or ought to be reasonably known to be unwelcome or workplace sexual harassment. Reasonable action or conduct by an employer, manager, or supervisor that as part of his or her normal work function would not normally be considered workplace harassment. This is the case even if there are sometimes unpleasant consequences for a worker. Examples could include changes in work assignments, scheduling, job assessment and evaluation, workplace inspections, implementation of dress code, and disciplinary action. Differences of opinion or minor disagreements between coworkers would also not generally be considered workplace harassment. In addition, any behavior that would meet the definition of workplace violence would not be considered to be workplace harassment. In addition to the Occupational Health and Safety Act, Ontario's Human Rights Code gives employees the right to freedom from harassment in the workplace by the employer, agent of the employer, or another employee because of race, ancestry, place of origin, color, ethnic origin, citizenship, creed, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, age, record of offenses, marital status, family status, or disability. Sexual solicitation or advance made by a person in a position to confer, grant or deny benefit or advancement to the person where the person making the solicitation or advance knows or ought to reasonably know that it is unwelcome, is not permitted. Every person has a right to be free from reprisals or threats of reprisal for the rejection of sexual advances from such persons. Examples of workplace harassment include but are not limited to offensive or intimidating comments or jokes, bullying or aggressive behavior, displaying or circulating offensive pictures or materials, workplace sexual harassment, isolating or making fun of a worker. According to the Occupational Health and Safety Act, 
Employers, supervisors, and workers all have specific responsibilities and duties to help keep our school board safe from violence and harassment. Duties of workers include act respectfully at work and while conducting work-related activities, view information and instruction when provided and required, cooperate with investigations, and follow the measures and procedures set out in our workplace violence and harassment prevention program documents. Section 28 of the Occupational Health and Safety Act states that a worker shall work in compliance with the provisions of the Occupational Health and Safety Act and regulations. Use or wear the equipment, protective devices, clothing that the worker's employer requires to be used or worn. And to report to his or her principal or supervisor the existence of any hazards which they know of including workplace violence. Duties of supervisors under the Occupational Health and Safety Act include advising workers of hazards, including violence, providing information and instruction to workers, and ensuring workers work in compliance with the Occupational Health and Safety Act and regulations and employers' procedures, and they use or wear the protective devices stated in the regulations and by the employer. Duties of employers under the Occupational Health and Safety Act include providing information, instruction, and supervision to a worker, when appointing a supervisor, appointing a competent person, acquainting a worker with any hazard in the work and in the handling, storage, use, disposal, and transport of any article, device, equipment, or a biological, chemical, or physical agent. Afford assistance and cooperation to a committee and a health and safety representative, and take every reasonable precaution in the circumstances for the protection of a worker. From Section 32, under the Occupational Health and Safety Act, an employer shall also prepare a policy with respect to workplace violence and workplace harassment, review the policies as often as necessary, but at least annually, develop and maintain a program in consultation with the Joint Health and Safety Committee to implement this policy, assess the risks of workplace violence that may arise from the nature of the workplace, the type of work, or the conditions of work, Advise the Central Joint Health and Safety Committee of the results of the assessment and provide a copy if the assessment is in writing. Reassess the risks of workplace violence as often as necessary to ensure that the related policy and the related program continue to protect workers from workplace violence. Take every reasonable precaution in the circumstances for the protection of the worker when the employer becomes aware or ought to be reasonably aware of domestic violence that would likely expose a worker to physical injury in the workplace. Provide a worker with information and instruction that is appropriate for the worker on the contents of the policy and program with respect to workplace violence and harassment and any other prescribed information or instruction. And provide information including personal information related to the risk of workplace violence from a person with a history of violent behavior if the worker can be expected to encounter that person in the course of his or her work and the risk of workplace violence is likely to expose the worker to physical injury. The following documents contain information and instruction on the board's violence and harassment prevention programs. Workplace violence and harassment prevention, workplace harassment procedure, workplace harassment formal complaint form, workplace violence prevention program, violent incident report, and the following programs include information on risk assessment, means of summoning immediate assistance, reporting incidents, and investigation procedures. Congratulations on completing the Workplace Violence and Harassment Training Course for Hamilton Wentworth District School Board. To summarize, in this course, you have learned about the definitions of workplace violence and harassment, worker rights, the duties of workplace parties under the Occupational Health and Safety Act, board procedures in place to address violence and harassment, as well as strategies to address escalating situations.